Hi there and welcome. In this quick video, I'm going to give you a very high level, very quick overview of Swift Cloud and what it can do for you. So we have a growing suite of business tools and one of our core foundations is electronic documents, which includes electronic signatures, advanced forms, that kind of thing. So one of the unique functions that we have in the system is the shortcode system. So here's what I mean. If you drop something like this, Swift underscore signature in brackets into a document, on the front end, our system will convert that to a signature field in which the user can either sign using their mouse or their finger if it's on a phone, or they can type it in if that's what they prefer. So let's dive into it and take a really quick whirlwind overview. So here's Swift Cloud. Obviously you wanna get logged in. Once you get logged in, you're gonna see a homepage that looks something like this. On the very top left, you see what looks like three dinner plates. That's a drive icon. If you go ahead and click that, this will expand open. Once you get to the drive page, you can go ahead and click on add new. There you'll see a variety of types of assets that our system supports. And there are many different sub assets, not all of which are immediately visible from here. So what you can do is if you go ahead and create a new doc, it's gonna ask you, okay, great, what do you wanna call it? We also do have a templates library here up in the top right. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just create a new doc. What I wanna show you is the simplest possible document editor type. So once you create a new document, you'll see up here at the top a title. You can rename that at any time. And in this case, I'm just gonna make a, a demo, right? You'll see edit and preview. And our system has a back end and a front end. Now, sessions, in most cases for a waiver, you would not use. A session is used typically for two, two situations. Number one is if you have a complex sales contract. So let's say you want to take a, uh, let's say a loan application over the phone, and then you start filling in data for that client. At that point, it becomes a session. And so what you need to do is have the document created first. You start filling in some data. And then when you give it to the client, they just have to take over, maybe complete filling some documents, check some things, and sign it and take over. So that's an option for multi-party collaboration. It's also used for multi-party signature, which we're just now getting into where you have the ability for, let's say, a seller, then a buyer to sign, right? So technically we create a session. I don't want to get too far into that. What I want to do is just show you the absolute basics. So here we have the simplest possible e-sign waiver. And here's what it looks like on the front end, right? So notice it says paste your e-sign waiver or paste your waiver here. On the back end, you have what you would look like, what looks like just the normal controls, right? You've got various, you know, text editor, you can make different headings, and you've seen this sort of thing before. What I wanna draw your attention to are some of these blue icons here, and those are our short codes so that you don't have to remember all of the various short codes. So we have system reserved sys uh, fields like name, and that's because our system does have a complete contact manager. You can store notes, you can contact people right through the whole system. We'll cover that in a second. But we have uh, those those fields are of course re, uh, reserved so that when, this, when somebody's name comes through, in the case of name both, our system will split it up, right? So if they type in John Doe, our system is smart enough to recognize their first name and their last name. If you prefer to split it out first and last name, that's fine too. You've got email, you've got phones, you've got different types of phones. This will help with the formatting. You've got location. This will store the address to the contact. So related to that is a, is a concept of called roles, right? In this case, I have this set up for loans, right? In this case, the role is borrower. As people come in, then we want to tag them with that role. So if your clients are borrowers, if you're in the mortgage industry, then that's what they are. If you're a dentist, then they would be patients. If you are a karate school instructor, then it would be students, right? As the most common signer, but you might specify parent versus child, right? Or parent versus student. So that's why we have the roles system. So we'll tag people as that. That'll allow you to separate your HR, uh, let's say vendors versus staff, that kind of thing. Anybody can be tagged with anything. So on the front end, you can see how these correspond. So here we have full name and then this Swift name both corresponds to this name right here, right? So John Doe. And in this case, email, Swift email, that's the email field, right? So I've got that pre-filled. Here's the Swift signature. Now, in this case, we have this required. You don't have to remember any of this. What you do is just go up here to the signature, to the shortcode generator. You just go down here to signature, 
Go to signature. It's going to ask what size do you want, right? Is this field required? And what's the role? If you wanted to, you could make a new role just like that, just by clicking so, right? In this case, I have a demo account. So I'll leave it as that. And then we have Swift date. And we have it specified. There are a bunch of different sort of sub um, short codes here that you don't have to remember. You just go down here to Swift date and time, click date and time. It's going to ask, okay, what format do you want? USA, European, uh, India, etc. You've got different options for formatting. We also want to know who's, right? So if you have a client in Hawaii, but you're in New York, obviously there's a time difference. And if that contract expires at noon, we have to take this very seriously. So with electronic signature, we store everything as GMT and then adjust it to the appropriate borrower or to the appropriate user, right? So we have to be really on that. In this case, I can hit sign and send. What it's gonna do is it's gonna redirect me as per the rules in this pink box. So in this case, I don't have any logic, right? If I wanted to, I could hook up logic based on what they entered. That's typically used for, let's say, a product choice. Let's say somebody's going through here and do you want the deluxe package or do you want the regular package? Well, then we might uh, redirect them to a different package at that time. In most cases, we just send them back to another URL, which is frequently on your website. Uh, if you have the most simple, like uh, the simplest possible scenario, if you just want them to sign a waiver, for example, and it's over the web, not a kiosk or tablet mode, then you may want to just send them back to your website it says, thanks, you're all set. You did the right thing. Here's what's next, right? Something like that. In the case of in tab, uh, kiosk or tablet mode, what we'll do is we'll try and suppress the autocomplete so that they don't see all the other people who filled out that form. And then we'll just reset the form after showing them a confirmation. We do have a couple different options. You could send, you can chain multiple documents together. So if somebody signs something and then you want to send them to a setup doc, for example, you could certainly do that. You could send them to an e-commerce. We we have within it Swift Shop, right? It's a uh, e-commerce system. You also have the ability to do invoicing, that kind of thing. So, but for now, we just want to stay focused on electronic signature and just kind of the basics, right? So if that's what you're looking for, then that's how you can hook that up. So in this case, we'll just leave it as redirect. Uh, in this case, we also want them to get an email, right? So this is for the signer, right? And here is just a copy of the document, right? So this, what this does, it'll attach a PDF that they signed, in this case, this one, right? So if you wanted to get rid of that, you just hit this little red X. If we wanted to add them to a sequence, then we could, we've got a couple different options here. Uh, in the blue box, well, let me change that. So we could remove them from a sequence. That's typically used in the case of you wanna remove them from the leads list and add them to the buyers list, right? You could do that from here. So in this case, I don't need any of that. I'm just gonna close it. Let me close this. You've got a couple different options. You can stack these things together. So in this case, what I want to do is I want them just to email me. You do have a couple different options. If I wanted to email another party, I could set up those rules here in the blue box. Everything in this blue box is just for you. So in the beige box, this is, okay, great. What do you want to do with your document? So typically that might be, let's say, added to your website. Maybe you want to make a button on your website. It says, go here to sign our waiver. Maybe you want to add it to your website's navigation. You've got different options. If you were using kiosk, uh, if you were using this for in-person signature uh, with a kiosk or a tablet or something like that, then what you'd want to do is take that and bookmark it. You can map domains to our server. So if you wanted to, you could replace this entire section right here with something like secure.mywebsite.com. And then these things, you can of course name something more friendly as well. Down here in the gray box, we've got, we've sort of buried a bunch of more advanced options. The featured image that shows up on social media. So pay special attention to that. If you're gonna be promoting this on Facebook or something like that, then whatever image is here is what's gonna get picked up, right? As the, the open, what's called open graph. You do have a couple different options here. So if you wanted to create just a web form or you wanted to create a, a frequently asked question snippet, which is increasingly useful for for automation and for things that are closer to something like a chat bot that we're building. Um, you've got options here and you can also use it in your own communication with the contacts. So speaking of the contacts list, right, is something like this. Once you're on the detail page, it'll look something like this and you've got different options, right? So if I wanted to add some, some information that I could, I just hit save. If I just want to collapse that, here are the files that I share. In this case, this is a brand new contact that I made just for this demo. But if I shared any files with that client, that's where they would show here. Increasingly over time, we will also have some other options down here. And of course, we can store notes and we can email the client right from here. Uh, here you can uh, choose templates, that kind of thing. We're reworking this system right now to add from add additional automation. Here you can just hit save and then you can hit preview. If at any time you want to send this to a user, go ahead and click this right here. I'll ask, okay, great. Who do you want to send it to? Right? So you want to type in John 
right? It's going to think for a second and it's going to find, start finding your recipients and then give you options, right? So here we go to John Doe. I do not want to start a session. This is a very simple document that's really, there's nothing to pre-fill, but I could technically fill in their name and then send them a session from really any document. Again, that's used typically for sales contracts or HR, complex HR forms, that kind of thing. Once somebody has signed, then they will get an email that looks something like this, right? You'll get, this is what the owner gets. So they get this rather detailed uh, email with a PDF attached if there is an electronic signature or if you have that enabled, right? That's an option. And the signer, of course, will get a copy if that's if you've chosen to enable that in the pink box. By the way, everything in the Swift Cloud account can be branded just in the very bottom left. Click the gear and then click edit profile. And you can and should replace this logo with your own. It should have your colors, your logos, ideally your domain. We want people to feel like they're in a cohesive experience on in the right place. Note that, that any electronic signature must be on our server because we have to be able to legally guarantee the contents of the signed document and therefore using CSS or something like that to obfuscate the content or potentially mess with the signer intent. That cannot be allowed and therefore that must be on our server in which we control. Forms and that sort of thing can be embedded on your website, and we certainly encourage you to do so. By the way, we do have eSign PDFs. Note that I do not recommend this in 90% of cases, and the reason is it's not going to look good on various devices. It cannot be responsive. It has to match the output. So the only time you want to use that is when the output must match exactly, such as for these government forms. The way that works is you import a PDF, and then you simply add fields and just uh, layer them on top of them and then drag them into position. We have a growing suite of tools, and uh, we really love our clients. We're in this wonderful spot where we're small enough to give you personal attention and we're big enough to be unkillable. So, and growing rapidly, we welcome you and uh, look forward to working with you. Thanks.